my life is never boring. Between washing machines and near-death experiences, this past weekend, I actually saw my ex-boyfriend going away party. So, in my past 19 years of experience or so, I've kind of learned how to love, be loved, and share that love. And today I'm going to go a little bit in depth of how my coming of being was brought up by my community, my family, and my ex's family. For the record, they love him more than they love him. Mm. So I grew up in East LA. You know, it's it's a pretty active community. Um, and I remember when I was in the first grade, there was this man. He looked a lot like Dolby from Harry Potter. Big ears, pointy nose. I remember he would follow my mom and I and my little brother um, to the bus stop um, after coming out of school. And I remember telling my mom, like, hey, look, he wants to talk to us, he wants to talk to us. And my mom was like, stop, you should be cautious with the other community ladies. And I remember at one point she even sat me down next to him. Long story short, one day he actually ended up following me home. Pretty scarring. Second grade, I remember I, well, I am the only um, daughter of the family. I am also my grandparents' only granddaughter of the family, so I have a little rice, I feel me. <laughs> and, um, well, because of this, I'm also daddy's little girl. I wasn't exactly mommy's little favorite princess because I was everything but a princess with her. Um, I would get into a lot of trouble. She would nag on my dad, and my dad kind of didn't like the way she was reacting to me and my actions. So every time um, Daddy would come home, I would be crying, telling him that Mommy took me to time out. All he would do was embrace me and love me in his arms. <laughs> so I would tend to like kind of put hit my mom and dad against each other. That's fine. <laughs> At nine years old, I remember I started getting into a little more trouble. My dad was kind of just over trying to like embrace me in his arms. At some point, I remember he picked me up from school because he had gotten off at work early that day, and I heard him hearing parenting audios of how to love his daughter and how he should be building his daughter's self-esteem. And I remember I was like, what is it that I'm doing wrong that my dad has to consult these parenting audios to know how to parent me? So I thought that was a little, okay, a little odd. I remember telling my friends at school, too, like, my dad doesn't know how to be a dad. And like, everyone would kind of just laugh about it with me. <laughs> in 12 or in 12, when I was 12 years old, I remember growing up, people would tell me that going to jail was probably going to be the best alternative for my life course because at this point, my family was in deep financial debt and we were on the verge of living on the street. In jail, I would have food two to three times a day, I would have a running shower, and I would always have clothes. I wouldn't have to worry, worry about what to wear the next day to school, if I even chose. At 14, I stopped being physically disciplined, and at 16, I got kicked out of my own house. At 18, I decided to move out from my circumstances, and um, at 19, I had the greatest epiphany of my life. My parents are people too. Just as it, just as they see me grow up, I've seen them grow up as well. My parents didn't exactly have parents of their own, um, mostly because they were also abandoned as kids, both of them. Um, and because of this, it's come to shape my parents' character. My dad is a little more on the bitter and grudgier side. I my mom is so sweet and compassionate. How they ended up together, I have no idea. It is what it is. Now, again, at 19, I, well, obviously I have my ex-boyfriend and his family who loves me so much, so much so that they even took me to Disneyland once and forgot to invite him. Totally fine, you know? But it's in moments like these where I would kind of pick up how family would love family and how everyone would kind of express that to one another. And I sort of felt lonely in this. I felt kind of just lost. And, well, here's how I came to view as my ex and all that. He's from church. Wait for the Don't take anybody from church. <laughs> um, but, yeah, my church family, again, also my church family, um, they are emotionally intelligent, and it is through their grace and their actions and their love. When I got kicked out, they let me move in with them. They gave me a free free house and they provided for me with my time I felt like I had completely nothing. I had no job, no school, my grades were just a How I got to Pepperdine, that's God's grace. 
but um, it is through my, again, through my ex's family that I've learned how to love not only myself, not only learn other people, how to learn to love other people, but especially how to forgive my parents and understand where it is or why it is they act the way that they do. So, all in all, coming from a community that kind of um, objectified you or sometimes even degraded you for your situations and adversity, it is in that reflection of your adversity that, or at least in my own, that I have learned how to grow from my circumstances and see and feel the love that I know my parents have for me without them having to directly express it to me. And I'll leave you guys with this. There's this quote, Cornelia said, or was read, or quoted, blood is thicker than water. The actual quote goes, thicker is the blood in the covenant than the water that lies in the sea. My biggest life lesson. <laughs> What do you think? I need water. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs>